Okay. Tonight, uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to tonight's uh, live class on um, virtual administrative assistant. Last week, we treated the uh, the introduction to virtual assistants and what is virtual assistant educational requirements for virtual assistants required experience to work as a virtual assistant how much do virtual assistant make rules and responsibilities of virtual assistant and these rules and responsibilities of virtual assistant that's what we have been treating yeah we've treated the e-commerce website management e-commerce order management general office administration blogging website management social media management and tonight we are going to um, continue from social media marketing <clears throat> social media marketing is a very big uh, event in the in the whole industries these days you find out that any company that doesn't have a page in all these social medias is either that you don't know what, what is happening or you are just starting or you must have a page you must have a presence in social media these days because everybody, all our activities, everybody is now on social media. It's like social media is, is like our first home. And our houses, every other thing we do seems to be the secondary. Social media activity is now the primary, is taking over our, our normal life, our daily activity, our business activity. So the only way you can showcase the world what you are doing is through a proper branding of your products in social medias. Social media marketing specialized in the marketing that happens on the social media before marketing used to be um conventional conventional in that before you can be a marketer you you have to know you must be strong so that you'll be able to move from one place to another for instance using banking those days banking marketers they tend to move around looking for customers moving from market to market moving from offices to offices and even product marketers they tend to be carrying their product from one place to the other but these days all those things are now in the past so you must learn 
companies must learn how to manage their product, their brand, their services on social media in order to increase their, their awareness, their product, their, their, their sales, and their revenue. To be honest with you, my business, this my school, Ninety percent, um, seventy percent of my sales is through social media. The first um, training that I provided, I advertised it in social media, and. The following day, I had more than 300 registered um, students. And that is way, behind, uh, way uh, above uh, my capacity. And I have to um, take down the, the adverts and stop the intake. But if not because of social media, how would that be possible? You just, the advertisements are made on social media and it trended. So social media marketing means creating campaigns set spending and define ad targets. Take ad campaign reports details um, for your companies or for your boards. So that's what social media marketing is all about. Uh, let's um, have a look at let me use my social media, let me use my account to show us a bit of what social media marketing is all about. Let's do it a bit practical because we are going to be doing it practical. <clears throat> this is my my Facebook account and um, here this is my Trying to show you guys my friends. So what I'm trying to say, I have over 5,000 friends on, on Facebook and that is um, my limit. If it's not because of the limitation would have gone um, more than that you see my friends here is 4900 friends just my ordinary friends so anything i do 
even if I cough on this Facebook, these 4,900 friends, they will see what I'm doing. And friends of this, my friends, will see what I'm doing. And friends of friends of friends will see what I'm doing. So is that's why it's called is a network. So anything you do triggers. People tend to know, tend to see what you are, are doing. And this is not just a marketing. This is just um, ordinary um, networking. So with this, you see the kind of power the social media have. But if not because of this, if I want to do something or an event and I want people to know about it, how is it going to be possible? Then what if we want to create an awareness? Let me take... This our school, for instance. This is our page. This is our office in social media. This is our office. So if a company hires you, and want you to work for them as a virtual assistant here, this is where you'll be working from. And what do you do? This is where you promote their product. You create campaign from here. So if you want to create an ad, this is from where you do it. You create it from here. So from here, you want to select business location. This is where you select it. Do you have a website? Yes. So from here, you create the social media. I'm not going to create because I don't have any plan of creating any uh, advertising, any product now, but this is from where you, you create it. And that way, You can do anything the company wants you to do. And from there, you'll be monitoring. If you are, if you are, if you are for instance, as, as, um, as a virtual assistant, here you can monitor the activities of the ad you've created. You take statistics of all these, this page view, this likes, this post reach, this story reach. So these are the things you will be working, analyzing all these things, monitoring the progress, whether this page is going up or not. That is how you'll be monitoring everything you do all the posts you send, this is where you monitor all of them. And you can boost them from here. If you want, you can promote like this particular page. Hi, everyone. This is a post I send about this course, this particular course we are doing now. I didn't promote this page. 
I did not promote it. I didn't spend ten of in promoting this page. But just normal um, reach, you reach 314 uh, people. But if I choose to boost this post, this is where I'm going to start boosting this post. And from here, I'll make some money. I'll pay, make payments here. Within seven days, what I'm going to pay is $14. And if I pay this $14, this page will reach between 460 to 1,300 people a day. So that is what um, what I can gain from this. And if this course can reach up to 1,300 people a day, believe me, out of 1,300 people a day, we must be making at least 10 sales in a day. just spending only $14. And I'll be, um, my product will be reaching 1,300 people a day. So how can a company reach up to 1,300 people a day if, if they are doing their marketing um, using analog method? It's not possible. And you check, you, you, you fuel the vehicle, you used to move around. By the time you go to one office to two office, it's already the end of the day. But somebody doing it, uh, sitting at home, promoting it, will be meeting up to 1,300 people per day. And what you spend is two, dollars per day so this is what you can what you spend in a a week that is seven days so that is it so that's why every company have decided to go into social media to, to advertise their product and that is why there is high jobs there is a lot of jobs a lot of jobs for virtual assistants. Somebody that can be doing all this in promoting this page, monitoring this page. For instance, now as a virtual assistant, if you've been assigned to promote this page, if you promote this page with this amount of money, you are not just going to relax. You'll be monitoring the activity of this particular promotion or this advertisement. So that is what you are going to be doing. And it's not a rocket science. As you can see, it's very easy. It's very, very easy. So I'm not um, promoting this. This is just to show you how to um, do the promotion. So, so it's very easy, super easy. So. Now, if I decided to spend $500, then 12,000 to 36,000 people will be seeing my product on daily basis. I mean, um, if I can spend this amount on a week, so, on daily basis, this is what they'll be saying. And on daily basis, this is what I'll be spending, $71 per day. And I'll be getting this kind of traffic. And at the end of the month, at the end of the week, at the end of seven days, if I spend $500, 
but 8 million people will see my, my product. That is crazy, you know? So that is the power of social media. So at times you see people spending all their time in social media, promoting their products, things they don't know what they are doing. They know what they are doing. A lot of people are just cool, relaxing in their house, making a lot of money. And we don't know what they are doing. We're just thinking they are just wasting their time. They're actually doing the real business. They even make more money than people going out every day to hustle if you understand what you are doing. So if you have these skills, companies are looking for you because there is, these are what you'll be doing for them. But the truth is that not a lot of, a lot of people knows about social media, but they don't know the business going, going on uh, behind the scene. They just come to social media to chat, gossip, read news, talk about politics, uh, talk about celebrity and the rest of them and they leave. They don't make money. They don't care about what is going on. So that is um, all we can um, do about it. So this is all my posts here. I can decide to promote all my posts from here. So which I'll be doing very soon, but I'm just, trying to package my product very well before uh, going out. All this one you are just seeing here is organic reach. Organic reach is the one that you didn't promote. It's just moving on its own. So that is, you can see organic reach is 199 paid is I've not paid anything. So this one, organic reach is 314 paid. I have not paid anything. So, which I'm going to start paying very soon. So, and these are some of the things we are going to be doing. So this is just the overview. You come here, that is the, from here you can do the, the ad, the summary. So, so that's it. And grow your business. Well, this is just an overview to see you people to show you people where you actually do the the remarketing. So, so Facebook is highly organized. Highly organized. So let's move on. At least we've seen where we can do our marketing behind the scene. So if a company hires us, we know that this is where we are going to be coming to do our 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 virtual assistant role. But these are some of the things we are going to be working on during the one month uh, work experience. So this is just the training. I'm not going to waste much time here because of time. So. Then the next thing we are going to look at is accounting and bookkeeping. This is uh, managing of, uh, as a virtual assistant, what we are going to be doing is managing staff reimbursement, actual bookkeeping, creating and managing invoices, coordinating financial statements, processing payment, checking expenses and verifying payroll and creating regular budget statements. So this is um, 
purely accounting and bookkeeping, just basic, basic aspect of um, accounting. You manage, um, uh, if you have worked in a company before, there's what we call a, a staff reimbursement. If um, a staff uses his money to do something for the company, at the end of the, the, the activity, the, the staff will fill a form and they write a reimbursement and submit it to the uh, finance and account for, the, for him or her to be paid back the money he, he used. For instance, if you, are, if you went on an errand and um, you use your money for transportation, at the end of the, the process, you write for reimbursement. I did that a lot when I was um, working in Lagos. I was um, um, doing a lot of um, uh, banking transactions for, for the companies. And then there's a time our vehicle will not be enough. Um, so I have to take cab to do some of those uh, um, errand or my, complete my activity. At the end of the day, I'll write for reimbursement and company will pay me. So we have a cashier who will be taking care of all those things and uh, making sure that uh, the reimbursement is being made. But in this scenario, as a virtual assistant, you'll be doing all these things online. You'll be receiving emails about what the, the staff are doing, the activities, and what they are at times they make procurement online, they pay for little, little things like they can even pay for, for instance, this Zoom, if you are having a workshop, if Zoom is paid, uh, if you're having a workshop and like you are using a Zoom for your workshop, when you pay for it, at the end of the day, all this money, you claim it back. So is the virtual assistant pro that make uh, process all this little, little payment and make sure that um, is paid. And when such payment is made, you prepare the invoice and uh, some of all these things to post it to the um, ledger. So if you are working with account as a payroll of, they are going to teach you how you are going to be using their payroll system to do all these things. But they are not, um, they are not rocket science. They are very easy. So next is uh, billing and invoicing. It's a continuation of uh, accounting and bookkeeping. You create, there is um, softwares. There's a lot of free softwares online you can use to create uh, invoices. So as a virtual assistant, the very easy to be creating invoices for your companies using all these uh, free, um, free or paid invoice invoicing. So you verify each invoice, send them out, process payment and record payment when completed. So these are what you'll be doing. It's very easy. During the, when we'll be looking at the tools, uh, we uh, virtual assistant, you are going to look one of the um, software you use to create invoice. So, so you will learn how to use uh, in, uh, those are softwares. Some of them are free softwares to create invoice. Like me, they, these are the kind of uh, the software I use. Like I have a contract with so many companies here in UK that I'm working um, as a self-employed with. So at the end of the week or at the end of the, my contract, I send an invoice to them and they pay me my money. So for instance, if uh, some of you are working with me as a virtual assistant, you are, you are going to be the one creating all this invoice and sending it to the company on my behalf and making sure that the money is paid uh, into my account. And 
once the money is being paid, you process the, the invoice and then um, you document it to the appropriate folder and uh, make sure that it is uh, uh, it is numbered with the, the appropriate dates. So these are the little, little things you'll be doing as a virtual assistant. And all these things, you are going to be doing it online. So it's, um, it's not a big deal because the software is online. And the companies you are sending it, you send it, uh, when you create it, you send it to them via their email. They receive it, they confirm that they receive, they make payment. And they will notify you that the payment is made. They can't pay you if you don't send the invoice to them, if you are working with them as a contractor. So project management. As a virtual assistant, you can work as a project management support officer. You'll be creating meeting, holding meeting, asking for update from team members, create reports on the prog uh, progress of the pro project, monitor the monitor that project stays on time and on budget. So these are what we'll be doing, like some of you that have got experience in project management. So you can start your career as a, a, a project manager as a virtual assistant, which is uh, um, the smallest entry as a project manager, uh, project management. You can do that as a project um, support. You know, with your experience in what you've done in project management, you can do that. Let me take us back to the some of the projects we are managing. So now look at this project. As a virtual assistant, this is um, this is um, the project um, to do. To do means uh, activities. What we are going to be doing in the in this project tax and deliverables activities. So it's uh, sequential. So under this initiate, these are what we are going to be doing. And each activity here, at the end of each activity, the team will deliver a deliverable. For instance, This is what they are working on. They are trying to identify the project scope and project boundaries. So this is what they are doing. And so far, when they finish that, they will project, they will produce a project charter. Kabirat have submitted, have produced her own project charter. This is um, a copy of her deliverable. So the other people here is uh, Biko, uh, Femi, Donald, Lovett, um, Rudo, Folashade, and the uh, camera, but camera or something. So at the end of the day, they will all produce deliverables. And as a virtual assistant in this team, 
when this deliverable is uh, being delivered, I will review this deliverable and approve or decline. When I approve a deliverable, this the approved document need to be sent to to docs and file. So when I approve a deliverable, then you need to the file need to be documented here in the appropriate folder. So these are the initiate stage. So the, the folder need to, if it's under initiate, like we are, we are now in initiate stage, the folder need to come within this initiate stage. So the if you are the virtual assistant, what you do, you come here, you create a folder. Make a new folder. And um, call it project charter. So under this project charter, because you see you have so many of them here. I, I want them to be creative. Everybody needs to submit their own deliverable. Or everybody needs to submit their own project chapter. So you need to come here and document all the project chapters here from all the, all the project team members. But because we don't have a virtual assistant or project support officer, I mandated them that once I approve you are deliverable, you are going to be the one to bring your, your, deliver, your deliverable here to document it, because I don't have time to be documenting everybody's deliverable. You know, so my role is to review, review and approve. So there's someone should be doing this uh, housekeeping job. So who is doing that housekeeping job should be the virtual assistant, which is the project support officer. So, which is not big deal. So is this is just housekeeping, tidying files, making that sure that the file is in order. So if you are working in a real office, you see the same thing, you'll be carrying folder, filing, making sure that the files are in order, everything. But things have changed. We don't work in a real office again. We work, everything we're doing now is on the cloud. So, and we have a beautiful office here. This is my office. This is all this project is not our office. This is our cloud office environment. There is no longer the time we go to the office to do this and that. This is all the people working in this office. And this is what we are doing. This is our notice board. This is where we schedule our our, schedule, our meeting. This is docs and fire. Where we and this is where we see what we are doing. This is where we bring our work. And this is campfire where we chat. Like during break, we go out to chat. This is where we come to do our own chatting here. And if you want to send private message, you do it ping. If you get a notification or somebody may show your name, you get hey, you see it here. And that's it. So it's very beautiful working, working in the cloud. And this is our project. If you want to track what is everybody's doing, this is it. Today, this is today. And the only person that have done something today is um, me, the only person I visited here today is me, Kabirat, and Kamal. So if you are not working, I will know that you are not working. You know, if you are lazy about it, I know because this software is documenting everything you are doing. Some will tell me that I am working, but I didn't see you. You've not come to, to do anything here. 
So these are the people that are chatting on the campfire. And me, Kabrat, and um, Kamal. And Kabrat here is the lead uh, project manager who is, is working hard. She's working hard. So I see what everybody does. On, on Tuesday, this is what everybody will be doing. So Donald, on this day, this is what Donald and um, for last year day. And this is it. So some people have just been lazing about not coming to work. So that is what virtual assistant do, does in a project environment. You do the necessary housekeeping. Make sure that here, this is the due date for this um, deliverable. Today is a fourth due date. So on this due date, and if there is any of these uh, project team members have not submitted their deliverable, if you, are, if you are here, you just remind them. If it's a um, Femi or Donald, you send a message to Femi or Donald reminding them that they have not submitted their deliverable and is um, already fought. Their deliverable is becoming late. So you need to make sure that they deli submit their deliverable on time. You prompt them to make sure that we complete this project on time and on budget. So you are doing this on my behalf. So that is it. <clears throat> so That is how um, you ask for update from project team members, create reports on the progress of the project, monitor that project stays on time and on budget. So that's what you do. Okay. The next is um, content research. As a virtual assistant, you do, if you, are, if you are assigned on a content research, here you will learn about the company, its product, and its customers. Then you generate ideas and research assigned topics to provide relevant information. So they can assign you to, to research about their, their customers' um, activities, their customers' journey, what customers saying about their product. So if you are if you are assigned to do that, like you see companies, they have presence in um, so many social medias. They will post their product in social medias. And then they will be monitoring what the customers are saying about their product and their services. So with that, if you are assigned to do that, you'll be following all their, all their content, all their products, everything they are saying. For instance, let's say APC. If you are working now as a virtual assistant, the APC or PDP now assigned to you to follow their page, to see what people are saying, to know if they are popular. Now you'll be saying once they, they say something through their page, they either a big man or the chairman say something, you'll be monitoring what people are saying. And then you know if they are popular or not. These are you gather information. You do research on what people talk about their products, about their services. Now, everybody knows that P2B is trending. So if you are assigned, uh, if you if labor party are employed you to, to monitor their, pro, their P2B is their product, 
the product of Labour Party for now. So you need to understand what people are saying about P2B. Uh, Bola Tinibu is the product of APC, and Atiku Abubakar is the product of um, PDP. So if we are now they engage you in, um, on a research basis, you have to go and source information about any article published about Atiku Abubakar, you need to follow it up to know what people are talking about Atiku Abubakar. You document it, you write a report about it. So what you do is you find the information what the people are saying, then you analyze the information, you integrate the information, and then you document the information. And that's uh, what you do as a virtual assistant. So this can be happen if, if it's like, um, um, what is this, um, Odogu Beta. Uh -huh. you, see, you can hear what people are talking about to go Odogu Beta. So once um, Kubana group uh, published something about uh, Odogu Beta, so you, if they want to know how their products are performing, they can employ you to actually gather research, actually listen on not only, because what Facebook will show you from the statistics, what, a lot of how many people that have seen the Facebook is not going to tell you what people uh, gather requirement or what is you that are going to you have to do that one manually follow what know what people are talking and then you analyze and know what uh, you give the the company report about what people are saying about their products then customer research under customer research you understand the customers Track customers and analyze customer data. So it's almost the same thing with uh, content research, but this you focus on uh, customers. So what you do is identify customers, understand customers want and need, identify whom to target and how to reach them. Then you satisfy customers make the right product or service available to the right people at the right time make everyone feel better off from the exchange then you retain customer give customers a reason to keep coming back find new opportunities to win their business so this is what you do as a customer so you just analyze what try to find out what customers um their need how you can satisfy them for instance now um this my 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 course i need to if i need to find out what the the customers like in my course i have a customer review of every course i will i always uh, encourage my students to make a review, either read, not only rating, let them comment something, the way they feel about this, my course, which I want all of you to do. Once after my course, I want you to go and give your honest opinion. It will help me to know how to improve my course, and it will equally help others who want to, um, who want to uh, enroll in this course, who are having doubts whether this is good or not, to know actually uh, help them take decision. So these are the way it's done. So after all the reviews and the rest of them, if you are a virtual assistant, you go and read all the reviews and you analyze what the customers are saying and then you document it so that the management can use it to take decision on how to improve on that product on their services. So for instance, let me show us uh, just um, a little example on this. Google. Okay.
Okay. Now, if a student or a new customer <clears throat> want to buy this course, I've been begging my students, for, but only a few of them, but I will still uh, prompt them to come and review this course. This is the review, students review about this product. Nine people reviewed and they reviewed this course, um, five star. So let me click on it. So it's, this is a five star out of 280 students that they wrote. It's only nine people that read, but they, these nine people read that review, they give um, five star rating. So let's see if we are going to um, okay, see their reviews here. So if, as a virtual assistant, if you are meant to um, understand customers, research customers, these are what you are going to be doing, research to find out what customers, what the customers are saying. Are they happy? How can we improve? So this one said, excellent teaching, easy to understand, five-star rating. Amazing, amazing lesson from a most patient and expert professional team. I've, I'm having an insightful and uh, life-changing journey. Okay, this one just give five-star. This one just give five-star. Very precise and friendly to talk. This course has opened me up to a world of great opportunities. I love the hand-on experience this course offer, truly amazing. Thank you so much, sir, for this wonderful opportunity at Mr. Charles Ogu. You are a good teacher. Five star rating. This training came at the best time in my career switch to tech world. It was a hit back to back into different projects through so business analysis technique and tool. I want to thank our tutor Charles Ugu for this life-changing and amazing opportunity. It has, it has not been easy, but it made this training less stressful for every one of us. Thank you so much. So this is the review of this particular product. So you you gather this and you document this and send it to the management. If the management want to know the progress of this particular course and they want to know, they evaluate the, the teacher or the tutor. So you've gathered this and send them with this. They've known that actually the students are very happy about this particular product. So and if this course, if the review is very bad, you document it and they will invite me. Why are students not happy about my course? How can we improve this? And we'll find out with all the review students, will, they will tell you like this, we can decide to even um, talk to these students personally because we have their contacts, we have their numbers, we can contact them for more research, more data collection. So as a virtual assistant, this is what you can be doing for the companies. So. Then we are now into customer support. Customer support is um, answering customers' um, question, looking out for customers' this and taking messages. Actually, you receive complaints from customer as the first line supports taking their complaint, looking at their issues. 
and then you analyze their issues. If it's the problem you can solve, then you will resolve that problem immediately within the information at your reach. But if you find out that is not what you can do, you cannot resolve that particular issue, then you escalate that particular issue to the next line support, the college second line support. In customer support, we have up to three line support, first line support, second line support, and third line support. You talking to the customers directly on phone is the first line support. You gather their, their, their complaints, you analyze it, then you, you escalate it. If you cannot, um, if you cannot um, resolve the issue. So there are so many softwares we use in managing um, customer support. We have um, the most popular one is ServiceNow. We use it for incident management. So when you 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 gather information, you you document, you log it on, then if you resolve it immediately, you close it. But if you didn't resolve it, then you move to the second line support, who we uh, analyze the information and then get back to get back to you, the customer customer support and you the customer support will then get back to the customer so this is how it um, happened customer support is a full course on its own which we are going to be um rolling out very soon so but it's not so difficult so we are going to be having a full course on customer support um because um it is a bit um because of the software involved so how to use a um, software to manage all these in documents the incidents and move them from one support line to the next support line to the third support line so escalating these are the the main thing in customer support knowing how to document and escalate when to escalate these are the main thing in customer support. But I leave it sketchy. Maybe at the end of this, um, we'll come back to it um, to see how we can look into the tools we use for customer support. Maybe that is when we are going to um, dive deep a bit into customer support. Then here is a um, data entry. Data entry is a clerical work um, approach where you organize and type information. General recording of or typing of information and analyzing of information. So data entry is not really a big issue. Is understanding. The main thing is data entry, understanding the kind of um, software they are using to capture their data. So some company which are not advanced, they can use um, Excel sheet to capture their data. So it's just for you to capture the, is it a bio data? Is it financial data? What is the company fees? Biodata, then it might be something like uh, people's name, um, their date of birth, their something like that. I mean, personal data like people's name, address, date of birth. So these are personal data. And if it's financial data, then you capture like financial record. 
if it's if it's an individual financial record, you can capture like somebody's uh, bank account, like uh, credit card number, and the rest of these are the information you capture. And you are typing all these things into the database and you store it. So looking at this particular interface, this uh, under this uh, particular product, you see the name, the product number, model category, um, subcategory, and the rest of them. In sometimes some 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 you can get information via email, and from the email you can then transfer the information, type some of some of this information into the database and store it. You can be storing capturing information into the customer's um, relationship management, CRM. So that's some of the places you capture and then store this information. Maybe if uh, the, the, the sales team are generating a lead, business lead or marketing lead, so you capture the, when those, those information are being captured, they are stored into the CRM. So you are the person that will be storing all those names into the CRM and updating them. Uh, times when it's time to retrieve those information, you can help to retrieve the information, but they will be, will be trained on how to, to capture this information. But we're going to look at simple CRM that you can use to capture, um, you can use to capture um, data. One of them, which is free, which we are going to explore is um, HubSpot. We are going to explore HubSpot CRM during our HubSpot so HubSpot is the best free CRM solution for business. So we're going to explore this HubSpot. So marketing software for small business. <clears throat> so this is HubSpot. So we're going to be exploring all this. You learn how to use this HubSpot. You will be using it for capturing um, data, used for data entry. You can get it um, free of charge, so which is why we're going to, because you can use it for free. And there's paid ones, yeah, you have paid, paid solution where the starter is uh, 38, the last per month but the one we are going to use we are going to use the free one which is um, good enough for what we want so this is going to be your first assignment Go to HubSpot and create a free account. So that is what we are going to do. So when you create a free account, then we'll then see how we are going to capture in data. And uh, 
doing a marketing and sell, how to capture data through this HubSpot. But that's the first thing we are going to do. Just create an account. And when you have an account, then I'll be um, assigning other things you are going to be doing in HubSpot. So that is the assignment I'm giving to all of you to create account in HubSpot. So, Let me check. Yes, this is um, HubSpot. So inside HubSpot, this is how it looks like. Have inbox, have sales, have marketing, customers and social. So this is how HubSpot looks like. If you log into HubSpot, if you create an account and log in, this is what you're going to what it's going to look like. So we are going to on that tools in um, virtual assistant. We are going to treat HubSpot. So that's why I'm giving you this as an assignment. So you get started. Get started with that so that is it in data entry so we we'll have an assignment in data entry and we are looking at using hub spots then email marketing so in email marketing, as a virtual assistant, you send emails to customers or manage email sequence in email marketing program. Writing of emails or responding to it, especially if customer response, if customer's response includes setting up a meeting. You'll be managing your client's email responding to a lot of emails, uh, following up emails. And that is one of the basic uh, responsibility of a virtual assistant. So you, at times you have your clients, um, your boss, email and their password, to manage everything for them on their behalf. So we are going to look at email management, inbox management. We are going to use um, Google, Google Mail, that is Gmail, to look into how to manage email. So because of we are going to look into that extensively there is not much we can talk about this here but it's all about sending emails responding to emails following up emails and that's it automating emails so email marketing is used to be very popular but these days, because of social media, it's no longer um, it's no longer uh, popular the way it used to be. 
social media uh, is taking over. And again, Slack is not trying to replace email. People tend to collaborate a lot using Slack than email. But it's still, I'm still going to look into that. But it's one of the uh, key functions of or responsibilities of a virtual assistant, which is very easy. Then transcription. Transcription means listening to meeting or recording and transcribe what has been said. Take note and create a report on what was discussed. So as a transcriber, you, you follow your, your clients during their meeting. During the meeting, you, you listen to the meeting and if they are, as the meeting is going on, you are taking notes. It's more like a secretary. You are taking notes, writing on, on, on your client's behalf, documenting, taking minutes of the meeting, and that is it. You record everything. And then after recording, you document everything and then you submit the report or you document the report. But in a situation where there is a, um, a, like these days is Zoom meeting, most of the meeting is done online and you are going to be like a co-host with the your client so that you will be recording. You put the, the meeting on recording just like I'm doing now, I'm recording this video, I'm recording this workshop, this class is a meeting, I'm meeting with my students. So if, for instance, I have a transcriber, you'll be recording this meeting, all these things I'm saying, you'll be recording everything in a video. And at the end of this meeting, the transcriber will document all this in a report, everything I said within this, uh, within this meeting, document everything in the report and um, file the, the documentation. So this does uh, what transcription means. You have a, this time around, you have a, a, a rule called transcriptionist. And this role is really making the is really paying a lot of money. So you can even work as a transcriptionist on its own. And is a cost. Transcription is, is a cost of its own, a very big cost of its own, where a lot of people make a lot of money as a transcriptionist. So I make one documenting a cost on transcriptionist on its own, because these days, most of the things, most of the, the, most of the meetings are now online. You know, a lot of videos going on, classes, companies want somebody who can be transcribing all their recording and document them. So this, uh, what is um, transcription and some, some companies they want you to go and watch a lot of YouTube videos uh, to transcribe what information from those videos. Because if you go to YouTube, there's a lot of valuable videos out there, you know, the kind of research, you transcribe them and document them. They use it for their research purposes or even for their training. So there is no need of, um, there's no, no practical aspect of transcription in other than what we are doing now. So this, what we are doing now, if you can uh, document this class, taking notes, maybe after this, you can watch this, this video, all these things we are seeing, all this, um, and then record them write them down, type them, document them, 
Then you are a what you are doing is transcriptionist. So this is what you're going to be doing as a virtual assistant if you are under transcription. Then the next thing we have here is an online purchase. As a virtual assistant, you prepare purchase authorization form. This is how purchase authorization form. This is the name. Um, signing this form, the, the name of the uh, your client, and uh, by signing this form, you authorize so, 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 uh, a man to make purchase, you authorize um, you are the you are the trans you are the uh the virtual assistant your name will be here so by signing this form your client is authorizing you to make a purchase under five hundred dollars so this is giving you power to make purchases because your client will be leaving you with their credit card to make spending. Not all the time you need to run the company, buying things, booking expense, booking for hotel reserv making hotel reservation or tra making travel expenses on the, on the on behalf of your your client. You'll be calling the person to should I do this? Should I? No, so they will write. They will give you this um, authorization form giving you power to spend money from the credit card but they will authorize you they will give you the limit of the amount you are going to spend so this authorization gives you power to spend money up to the amount of 500 500 dollars at any particular period so you cannot spend more than $500 within the period. It cannot exceed $500. You will be contacted to confirm purchase related, um, related details. So once this form is being processed and signed, so you have the authority to make um, expenses. This is... Um, what you will be doing as a virtual assistant and this kind of um, mandate happens not only as a it happens everywhere even as a governor of a state have this kind of authorization form where the governor have the i think is is the s school that authorizes the amount governor can spend Governor's office can spend at any time. So there is a limit to amount of money governor can uh, approve or sign. Even in local government system, there is a, a certain amount a local government chairman cannot. Uh, so this is just all this authorization form fall within that same. It's giving you approval limit, approval to the limit of money you can uh, spend because. If this is not happen and you have um, a credit card that worth like fifty thousand dollars, so you don't just keep spending because you have fifty thousand dollars within the credit card. You must you spend within the limits approved to you. So and if you have this authorization and you are spending, this authorization has covered you even in tomorrow. If anything happened and they say, why did you spend this money? You have an authorization to spend this money. So that's it. So if you want to write this authorization, this is how it's going to look. So 
you are going to be the one to process it and then you ask how much you are is your authorization and then you, you forward it to your clients to approve so this is a i have a template for this authorization this is it here you can just double click this i'll send it over anyway for you to to have it then the next thing we are going to look at is uh, event planning Event management through planning is the application of project management to the creation and development of small through or large scale personal or corporate events such as festival, conferences, ceremonies, wedding, formal parties, concerts, or conventions. So these are events. So as a virtual assistant, you can manage events on behalf of your company or your client. You know the event, the event is um, a project. So you manage it. This also, that's why I was saying that the project management comes into uh, the activities of a virtual assistant. So when you are planning an event, you are managing a project. For instance, looking at this template here, this is, um, you are managing this event. If you need to manage events as a virtual assistant, this template can be handy for you. You look at the a type of event, event date, event time, the estimated duration of this event. Then you've done your while work breakdown structure, you've broken down into logistics, food and beverages. So you've created this into two. So under logistics, you have location of events, number of people attending, budget, who is paying, on site parking, and Veil. Then, if you come here, you, you have a food and a beverage. Under food and beverage, you have chef and ketra, number of uh, courses, uh, preferred cousins, must have items, items to avoid for those with uh, allergies dairy restrictions so on that wine here you have beer liquor so this is event for instance if you are planning a wedding event you know what to do um uh, venue job. so that is how to to plan it for your, so you be, should be able, as a virtual assistant, you should be able to, to plan a small event, even big event, depending on your, but you should be able to plan an event like wedding, formal party, festival for your companies, or your organization. So they might say to have an end of the year party, and they ask you to plan the event. So you, with this, you should be able to plan a good event. It's not difficult. So this is another template you can use. So these are categories of um, what you were planning, this the tags, these responsibilities, due dates. So you can use this to manage the event very well. So it was a very handy template for managing events. For some of you that have done project management, this is going to be a walkover for you people. But 
this is uh, as it is not difficult with this you do a, a, a work breakdown structure break the work in that under categories and subcategories and that is it so as a virtual assistant be expecting this kind of things you should be managing small small events get together party for the companies or for your clients maybe birthday party so these are the, some of the things you will be you'll be planning venue how many people come in you know what kind of food that will be eaten there so these are the things you can do event is a project so it's a mini project so with the skill of a project the project manager should be able to do this very well so that is um that is it for for tonight i wanted this class to last for one hour but it wasn't possible i didn't want to rush anything so if you have any question now anything you do not uh, understand you can put your hands up and we'll take it from there so, Hello. Who and who is sleeping? Okay. Only Nietzsche Obi is raising hands. Nietzsche, you can come with your can come up with your question. Okay, I think um, he she's just playing around. Yes, if you don't have question, you bring your hands down. So um, I can see everybody is um, very comfortable with my teaching. So that makes the job easy for me. So I'll see you here tomorrow the same time, the same venue. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank yeah. You, sir. All right. Good night. Good night. Yeah, good night. Uh, first lady, you came late, too. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> it's okay. You've been, the, you've been a serious student, so one late will not make you a bad one. I'm sorry, sir. It's okay. Yeah, good night, everyone. Good night, sir. Good night.